certainly not least, Asia King, the teller of this tale. some questions, but if you are compelled to ask something, please raise your hand up high so we can see you. Um, let's start off with Janixa from the way beginning. When did you feel first hear about the Zola saga, and why were you still compelled to put this on screen? I read it on Twitter, like it said at the top, in October of 2015 when it came out. I was immediately obsessed. It was the voice, her voice, it was so thrilling and compelling to me, the agency and the confidence that you could set this environment, this, the environment of this film and make it funny and upsetting and stressful, but most of all funny because my space that I feel the most comfortable in is in sort of stressful comedy and it really spoke to me. <laughs> um, and it really spoke to me and I knew that I wanted it. It was in a way, I mean, she's sort of like a real life superhero, right? I feel her voice is the voice I wish I had or maybe the quietest voice inside of me. And in terms of a collaboration, this is such a collaborative. So far. Yeah. Oh, it's sorry guys, it just feels weird. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is such a collaborative effort. Um, can you talk about your collaborators from the cast to your co-writer? Um, when did you decide to put this team together? How did you decide to put this team together? I think of, of everyone on the stage, well the first is Asia, and so I feel, you know, I'm brought to her, she's brought to me. Uh, Jeremy is the second person brought on. Uh, he is my co-writer. We, when, when I got the job, I knew that I wanted to write this piece with someone who felt perhaps more tethered to uh, their phone <laughs> uh, than I am. And, and I wanted to be able to play and, and arrive at this vocabulary that I felt he and I could do together. I feel like it's better if they talk about it, but <laughs> you get it. Thanks, thanks so much. Um, and then, and then the order is Taylor, then Coleman, then Nick, then Riley, and here we are. And Joy somewhere in there. Yeah. <laughs> um, is this the first time the cast has seen the film? And what are some of your initial reactions? The honest answer is no, but the answer we tell everyone that worked on it, our producers, is no, they've never seen it before. <laughs> So, but what, what were some of your first reactions when seeing the story finally up on screen? I think it was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was something like that. <laughs> um, for me, I was like reliving it, so it was a surreal moment. I was kind of frozen. I was no, wow. It was more like... Okay, yeah, that, that's happened. <laughs> so, to see it again, and like relive it, see it in film, and the way that they nailed it, like, yeah, it was a surreal moment for me. I'm talking to wow, girl. <laughs> um, I just, I always have this in film, but particularly with this one. You get so in the world, you're kind of like, oh yeah, this is all being filmed. <laughs> and that was, it was such a fun experience that it was kind of fun to just relive that experience because it was really, I think we all had a great time. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great time, yeah. Um, I watched it the first time in an editing suite by myself on a very small screen. Um, so this was a big screen and big sound and people laughing and enjoying it and laughing at Derek, <laughs> um, which feels bad, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's loyal, so. <laughs> well, first of all, it was so nice to be in a movie like this. <laughs> I'm a British actor, and you know, it's nice when I get to use different accents, and you know, great to be an American once in a while, so thank you very much for this. Um, but actually, it was really, really cool, because um, the way we bonded, we shot this down in Tampa, we became such a, I mean, we were taking, their images of us, like, we took naps together, these long shoots, and just loving each other, because also we, 
we felt, you know, we wanted to get into the, all the grittiness of what we were dealing with and the honesty of it. And also the playful sense of it, about how you can, you know, you can be playful and you can slide through some dark territory. And that's very human. And so I think we were just all really um, embracing that spirit and coming together, you know, with so much love because we had to do so much, you know, weird and harrowing work. Thank you very much. Yeah. Speaking about the human, one of my favorite scenes or parts of the movie is when you switch in perspective. How important was it to have the second voice tell the other side of the story? Uh, I remember that when it had come out, when it, when Asia had tweeted this story and I had started to do dramaturgical research on it, uh, most of the articles written about about her story questioned the validity of it. And and I think women, women of color particularly experience this when you, you know, speak your truth. I think the validity of the thing that you were talking about comes in question. And so I had done in my research the character that Riley and Nick are also loosely based on had also told their version of the events, one on Reddit, one on Facebook, and the, the movie, in a way, is a kind of love letter to the internet and, and cell phones and screens. And so I wanted, I felt that I didn't want to walk away from the movie and have anybody ask me, well, what did Stephanie think? And I was like, you know what she thinks, it's here. <laughs> and, and so there, that's why. Jeremy, do you have anything to add? <laughs> um, so, so, I mean, the fun thing about the whole movie, wait, working with Janix was that for like three months I got to be in like a really intense like film school. Because um, I didn't go to film school, I went to drama school. And um, one of the things about Janix is that she reminds me of my mom in the sense that like my mom was always like, when you clean the house, <laughs> sorry, sorry Janixa. Um, but my mom would be like, when you clean the house, like don't do your level of clean, do my level of clean. And so with Janixa, it was like, don't write your level of details, write my level of details. And I was like, okay. So it was like, the carpet had four limp hairs on it and like things like that. Um, and when we were looking at the thing, I was like, my only superpower I can bring here, besides my youth, is like, my, my, my detail, my, my attention to detail is only the details of structure. And the cool thing about Asia's structure as a writer is that, like, the first act of her piece, she sort of, like, welcomes everyone into the world who do doesn't understand how, like, um, the world of sex works, stripping works. So there's all these weird details where she's like, back page means this, this means that. And you're like, oh, cool, that's interesting. And then the second act, she's just like, okay, now we're on a ride. You don't need these inf any more information. I'm going to give you like the facts of it. And in the third act, she moves into some fabulation. You know, she was like, what does the audience need from this? And I think that when Janix and I were talking about what our third act would be, we were like, how can we um, recognize the, the fact of her fabulations in the third act and also recognize that there's going to be an audience of people who all come with their own relationship to this narrative because everyone who has read her Twitter has like their own idea of the movie in their head. So we wanted to like meet that, subvert that. And then in a moment like Stephanie, they can answer the people who like maybe had never read the Twitter before at all. I'm like, well, what's going on with that young white lady? Why aren't we in her world? Why don't we know what she's going through? And it became really exciting to meet that audience as well and say like, this is what she's going through. And it moves like Reddit, which is kind of awkward and ugly, you know? <laughs> okay, we have time for questions from the audience. Who has a question? Yes. I don't know what he was watching, because I don't know him, but uh, I, you know, it takes place in 2015, and it felt like it was a time capsule, and I wanted to, as much as possible within the rules that we had set up, be true to that year and earlier. Zola is a period piece. Correct. <laughs> yes, 2015. Uh, so that's why mine is Another question? We can hear you. Um, this question is for, uh, for Roy Akio. Um, I'm wondering, did you have an inspiration or a particular person uh, who you modeled your Interesting after? question. Uh, after, because, you know, the internet is so saturated with these white chicks that think they're someone else. <laughs> <laughs> Black scent? Yes, black scent and the Columbus thing of Ab and, and all that stuff. Do you want to go to the second to that? And if you had 
any inspiration behind that. Because it was uh, it, it was really uh, disturbing to watch. <laughs> So, for one, Jeremy and Janixa, like a lot of this character was on the page already. Um, the word she was using, the way she was speaking, like the character was kind of on the page. And then the next step was kind of just talking to Janixa about exactly what she wanted from this character. Obviously, appropriation was part of that conversation. Um, and I, I mean, I, I feel like you can speak to this, but I, she. We, she seemed to want to take it there. I, I wanted that. I, I wanted it to feel stressful the way those kinds of people feel stressful to me. And, um, <laughs> she's in blackface the whole movie. Yeah, she's in, she's in blackface. Uh, and I, I think, again, to go back to that thing of validity, you know, it, it's a black, it's a black woman, it's a white woman, it's a black woman's story about her relationship to this white woman. Uh, I remember when the Twitter had come out, there was this idea of like, the stories come from the ghetto, and Asia was like, actually, I'm from the suburbs. And, and so, and, and if you heard her talk, and Taylor talk, and I talk, and our, our, you know, our like, cadence is sort of similar and tiny. And I just wanted to make sure that, I think there was a version of this movie directed by someone else where Taylor and Riley are swapped. And it was very important to me in my body to make sure that Taylor was what I needed her to be, which was some version of myself, and that Riley was a version of a nightmare. <laughs> um, and then, like, just on the specifics, we worked together on the way I was talking, and I would kind of send her voice notes, and like, yes or no, or... More, more stressful. A, more stressful. <laughs> um, I worked with a woman named Eris Mendoza on that, and um, yeah, I just really did what Janixa asked me to do. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm being told we're running out of time, but please continue conversations outside, but please help me thank the entire cast.